Welcome to Mission Majima. Ajahn. Ajahn. So tell us about Majima Nikai number eight, the Seleka Sutta. So the Seleka Sutta, Majima Nikai eight, um, which translates roughly as effacement, is uh, a discourse where a monk, Mahachunda, approaches the Buddha and asks how one gives up views um, in regards to the self and the world. And the Buddha says uh, that to do this, one relinquishes the sense of self that or identification upon which such views or in regards to which such views arise, underlie, and work around, basically, um, the sort of sense of self that these views orbit almost. And he then goes on to speak about these eight formless uh, or eight states of deep concentrative attainment from the four jhanas to the four formless attainments. And in each case says that in the discipline of the noble ones, these uh, are a pleasant abiding in the here and now, but it's not true effacement. And this word effacement, seleka, um, it comes from the root lick, which means to kind of wear away or polish away. And it speaks to this movement towards the softening almost of a sense of unwholesome self or unwholesome sense of self. The Buddha then goes on to speak about how true effacement is practiced by cultivating um, these, abandoning these negative qualities of body, speech, and action um, through cultivating their opposites of the positive. And it's a list of 44. The first 10 are the 10 kamapata or roots, uh, or sorry, paths of action, um, of kama, which is a common list. Um, the next uh, 10 are the 10 fold version of the Noble Eightfold Path, so the Noble Eightfold Path plus right knowledge and right liberation. And then the final 24 are a list of uh, 24 kind of other more refined defilements of the mind, or upikalesa, which uh, we've encountered many uh, uh, points of in previous suttas already. And then the Buddha encourages those listening to practice well. So it's a beautiful sutta with a lot of nuance, which I think we'll get to draw out a bit. And how would you draw that out, Ajahn? What points would you kind of highlight in this discourse? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, finding what really is applicable for us in each sutta. Um, Venerable Nyanaponika talks about the list of 44 dhammas as being ones which incline towards moral independence, which is really important, specifically because the Buddha suggests in the list of Seleka dhammas is uh, thinking others will be harmful, I will be harmless, others will have wrong view, I will have right view. So even you know amongst you know mixed society or people who are not keeping the same level of ethics or virtue as you do, we can be independent of that. Yeah. Uh, there are five different patterns which the Buddha talks about. These Seleka ones, ones of wearing away um, uh, defilements, and then. He uses that same list of 44 going through four other patterns, the next being inclination of mind, even the inclination of mind towards harmlessness and towards uh, practicing these other virtues is good. Talking about avoidance, just as to avoid a harmful path, one has a safe path. So to, to avoid wrong view, wrong livelihood, etc., these 44, one has the right path uh, to avoid those just as the negative aspect leads downwards, so by practicing the positive aspects, it leads upwards. And just as all of these dhammas, this is the fifth pattern, lead to parinibhuta, or um, wearing away extinguishment mm. towards nibbana. Mm. So it's inspiring, um, these different patterns. Um, mm. Yeah. And how about for yourself, Ajahn? What would you draw out in this sutta? I think the reason this is such a kind of a, a hallmark or um, landmark for a lot of practitioners is it's really the Buddha, you know, we can get so fixated and uh, focused on these deep states of concentration, which we want to cultivate. And, you know, unification of mind, samadhi is an essential aspect of the Noble Eightfold Path. But for me, there's a real beauty to the Buddha saying that is a pleasant abiding, but the true, you know, practice of wearing away the sense of self occurs in these this breadth of practice which is accessible for all of us every day like every day how do i give up covetousness how do i relinquish views more um easily um and it just 
you know, makes the path of practice so much more broad, uh, more human, um, more accessible on a day-to-day basis that it's very heartening and very encouraging and very grounding. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, the commentaries do say that Mahachunda approaches the bhikkhu or the Buddha um, because he's concerned about some of his students overestimating their attainment and that pointing to the danger of, you know, and the Buddha really saying these eight deep states of concentration are a pleasant abiding, but they're not true effacement. And just really singling out the danger of taking these peak experiences, these um, deep states of concentration as true liberation when when really they're not. And really the path to that is sometimes a lot more grounded, nitty gritty day to day. So yeah, it's a beautiful discourse. Mm. And Ajahn, what new aspects do we encounter in this teaching? Yeah, in our progression through the Manjima, lots of firsts. So first encounter with Mahachinda, who is Venerable Sariputta's brother. Uh, first encounter of that phrase that we find in the Discourse on Not-Self, that this is not mine, I am not this, this is not myself. That's at the base of all this other proliferation. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the first instance of um, yeah, the ten kusala kamapatas, or the uh, basis for wholesome kama, or action, um, in which we've got three by body, so refraining from killing, stealing, uh, sexual misconduct, or celibacy, in, in this case, inclining towards that direction. Mm. Um, four with regards to speech, so refraining from lying, from harsh speech, mm. from gossip, from frivolous speech. Three with regards to the mind, so covetousness, ill will, and practicing inclining towards right view instead of wrong view. Mm. Um, ten types, a tenfold noble eightfold path where you get Two added on to the Eightfold Path, mm. which is Samanyana, Samavimutta, your right uh, knowledge and right liberation. And then also a number of quite fascinating um, other things to abandon or and to incline towards. Mm. First mention of Suvacha or being easy to speak to, mm. easy to admonish. First mention of having Kalyana Mitta or noble friendship, mm. good spiritual friendship, as opposed to Papa Mitta or bad friendship. Mm. First mention of Bahusutta or being well-learned, having heard much. First instance of hiri and otapa, or healthy sense of shame and healthy sense of fear, wrongdoing. And a really interesting dhamma, which speaks to holding on to one's own view, Hmm. relinquishing it with difficulty, holding on to it tenaciously. Uh, And also the first time when there is this uh, insistence by the Buddha, uh, there are these roots of trees, there are these empty huts, Hmm. meditate lest you regret it later. So there's a lot there. That's beautiful. And what's your personal relationship, your history with the Sutaja? I think, um, you know, one, per, you know, just to dovetail on what you're saying with relinquishing views, um, it's just worth flagging that. I mean, it's the final um, point that the Buddha lists in those 44, which makes sense since it's also the impetus for At Mahachunda's question is how does one relinquish these views that arise? But it's such a, you know, the Buddha pointing at the beginning to how the sense of self hides underneath our views and our clinging to them. And I just see that so prominently across the landscape of my own life, like how the sense of self hides in the shadow of a tightly clung to view. And the Buddha singling that out is pretty brilliant. And, you know, then to just uh, speak to this quote, which is kind of hiding in the midst of the sutta, um, where the Buddha says it is impossible, Mahachunda, that one sunk in the quagmire, in the swamp, in the mud, should pull out another sw- sunk in the mud. But it is possible that one not sunk in the mud, not defiled, might pull out, might train, uh, might bring to purity another who is, you know, defiled or sunk. And there's a view in some spiritual circles, you know, that quote unquote, you need to be uh, in the gutter to pull out others in the gutter. And uh, you need to be kind of immersed in the world to touch or teach or help those in the world. And this is the Buddha saying, no, like we can cultivate purity in ourselves. And not only is that not an obstacle to us helping others, but it's, it's the only real way. So that's a beautiful encouragement towards, towards purity. Mm. So Ajahn, what is the word of the day? The word of the day is seleka, which means effacement, um, comes from the root lick, which means to scratch or polish or wear away. Well, there you have it, everybody. There are these roots of trees. There are these empty huts. Meditate, lest you regret it later. 
And also join us on Zoom if you are able and it's the first Sunday. And in any event, we'll continue on with our Majima studies next week on Sunday for Majima number nine. Thanks for